pleased to have with us a friend of the program. He's an author, he's a researcher, a former mayor. Got the website, MindyMailHeist.com. Charles Marsal is with us, and Charles, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Good to be here. You've really been at the forefront of trying to come up with an idea to redevelop uh, Lee Circle uh, that is now just a barren pedestal. And uh, I like your idea, and I certainly want to support it, and uh, it's called Victory Circle. Yes, it is. Tell us about it. Well, and actually, I want to say Frank Stewart came up with the words Victory Circle. I was thinking Veterans Circle or something else, and, and Frank said that's it. And then once you see it, it, it makes so much sense. We have Victory Bonds, we have Victory Gardens, the Victory Bells of the museum. So we started seeing so much activity. Next year is the 75th anniversary of D-Day, and there's a lot of interest. These Victory Bells are all over the place. So yes, it, it's a wonderful idea to be inclusive, all wars, all, all races, mm -hmm. uh, Tuskegee Airmen, the Navajo Code Talkers. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank brought up the wax, the, the women that got into right. the Navy during World War II, the Merchant Marines. So it's a chance to modernize it, much like Arlington Cemetery was Lee's cemetery, mm -hmm. and now it's got 400,000 people that, that are honored there with being uh, and buried we're, there. We're showing folks some, some images that you provided to us of uh, the potential here. And, Right now, it's just a barren uh, pedestal, and it's such a focal point, uh, and you would think that uh, there would be a priority, really, to do something with it. Well, and actually, Jeff, next year, the hotel's going to reopen there. It's going to be called the Andrew Higgins Hotel. The uh, pavilion, the Bollinger, has is, is donated $20 million for that canopy. There's a lot of money going into that World War II museum. So it would just seem like a natural to connect, because if you look through past that pedestal, you see the World War II museum right. sign. Now, some said, oh, well, it's also going to honor Robert E. Lee and that they were uh, upset about that. I think there was one critic <laughs> in the newspaper. So respond to that if you could. You know, um, from my end, the Robert E. Lee Association put up the money initially to fund that. They took 14 years. I've read it's a 50,000-word, it's a uh, excuse me, 14,000 words, their dedication speech, 50 pages. Nothing bad, nefarious, or any evil intent when they put that monument up other than honor man who did a lot for New Orleans. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he tamed the Mississippi, uh, the Louisiana Tigers fought under him. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was done with the right spirit. But you would put up a plaque there that still says this was the original tent, mm -hmm. this is what was done, we, we're modernizing it. You can do that in a, in a graceful manner that, that's not, uh, that so shouldn't offend people. What's the next step? You have to get the mayor's approval for this? We are, we, we've approached the mayor's office, the senior advisor met with Frank and I, we've presented it to him. Uh, I think the mayor's had a lot on her plate, so we're hoping now that, that this does become a priority because we'd love to have something in place. And, and also, what we're finding out is um, there's Gold Star Family Day, mm -hmm. there's Purple Heart Day, mm -hmm. Vietnam Veterans Day. So as you start to roll in the next year, besides Memorial Day, D-Day, Veterans Day, there's so many ways to honor our veterans that we're not taking advantage of. Mm -hmm. And if you had that circle, uh, you could have parades there like we have in Harrison and Lakeview for mm -hmm. Veterans Day. Right. There's just so much that could be done, I think, to, to bring in more people to the community. And the museum would benefit from that. Right. Uh, have you talked to the D-Day Museum about this? We, what are their we, thoughts about it? We have started those discussions and mm -hmm. letting them know where we are with it. I, I haven't heard a word back yet on mm -hmm. that. Um, actually, I, one of the things I do is I made a documentary about the Victory Bells and what they're doing. So we, we've started letting the museum know we exist. And, and Frank uh, has been behind that museum from day one. Right. So he has reached out to them. We've started talking to some of their other donors to see what they think. And we've heard back, some of them said tone it down. The first presentation we did, they said they thought it was too busy. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I can say I have, I have a problem with being too busy at times. Right. So we, we've tried to make it simpler, mm -hmm. and then we're going to work out the details. The idea right now is get the concept approved. Mm -hmm. And then we can figure out, do we put an eagle at the top, the goddess of liberty at the top? Do we leave it like the tomb of the unknown soldier? Yeah. And, you know, there, there's... I like the eagle represents, you know, our country, symbol of our nation. Uh, that yeah. that we got a lot of response for the yeah. eagle. Yeah. And the, the initial idea I had was gave us a starting point. So now I think that the uh, right. that would be a great solution.